Hey there, I'm Benjamin from Love Starter. In this video, you'll learn how to track your website conversions using goals inside Google Analytics. We'll walk through how to identify goals and how to classify them into macro and micro conversions. We'll also cover how to assign goal value to your conversions and configure them inside Google Analytics. Let's get started. To configure goals, you'll need edit level permission in Google Analytics. You'll need to select Admin, and then Goals in the column on the right. In my demo account, I haven't configured any goals yet, so it says there is no data for this view, and there is a button to create a new goal. In my demo account, I do have Edit Permission, but if you don't, then you'll be able to see the goals that are configured, but you won't be able to add any new goals or adjust any existing goals. You should use goals to track any actions that are valuable to your business. For example, if you're trying to generate leads, then you should track successful form completions as goal conversions in Google Analytics. They allow us to understand if people are completing the objectives we've defined for our website. We can configure up to 20 goals per reporting view inside Google Analytics. In most cases, this is more than enough, but if you do need additional goals, then you can create another view which will give you 20 more goals to work with. And I do want to point out that if you're selling items online, then you should use e-commerce tracking and not a goal to track transactions and revenue. This allows to track the specific products people are buying along with other e-commerce related details. Okay, so now we're ready to create a goal. Let's click Add New Goal. We can now configure our goal. First, we need to name the goal. I'm going to name this goal Leads. Then I can select a goal slot. This allows to group related goals together in your reports. There are four goal sets, and each goal set can contain up to five goals. Let's leave this as the default selection. Now we need to select the goal type. We can configure different types of goals in Google Analytics. First, we have destination or page-based goals, which allow us to see if people reach a particular page within our website. This is the most common type of goal configured inside Google Analytics, and is typically for someone viewing a thank you page. For example, you might have an email sign-up form at the bottom of your pages, and when people fill out the form, they get taken to a confirmation page. We can then define the thank you page as our goal conversion, and we can see how many people complete that particular action on our website. Then there are engagement-based goals. These are duration and pages or screens per session. These let us count a conversion after someone spends a certain amount of time on our website or views a certain number of pages. The next option is an event-based goal that uses Google Analytics event tracking to measure interactions occurring on our website. This could be a PDF download, watching a video, or any other interaction on our site. You'll need to set up event tracking first, so events need to be included in your reports, and then you can configure these as a goal. You can then enter the event category, action, or label, or any combination of these to count a conversion in your reports. Finally, there is the Smart Goal option. This type of goal will automatically count conversions for the most engaged users on your website. You'll need to have Google Ads linked to Google Analytics, and you'll also need at least 500 clicks from your ads for this option to be available. It uses Google's machine learning to determine if a conversion should be counted. I'd really only use this option if you can't configure a destination or event goal, or if you're unable to implement e-commerce tracking. Since I don't have Google Ads linked to my Google Analytics in my demo account here, this option isn't available. Now, I want to count conversions when people view a particular thank you page on my website. So I'm going to select destination as the goal type, and I'm going to click continue. Now I need to enter the destination for my goal. This is the final thank you or confirmation page someone needs to view in order for a conversion to be counted into my reports. On the left, we can see it says equals to. This means that the URL of the page I enter will need to match exactly to the one someone views in order for a conversion to be counted. 
For example, if we enter forward slash thank dash you, it's only going to match that particular page. It is not going to match pages with additional details before or after the page. So as an example, forward slash thank dash you question mark ID equals 563. And another example, say it's thank you question mark ID equals 892. These would not be matched. It's only going to match exactly what we enter. Now we can select on this option and change the matching for the goal. So we can actually switch this to begins with. This will match URLs with or without query parameters. So entering forward slash thank dash you will match, of course, forward slash thank dash you as well as with additional query parameters. For example, thank you question mark ID equals 563 or question mark status equals true after that thank you page. And we can also see that we can select regular expression, which is an advanced matching option. For example, we could use regular expression matching to match multiple thank you pages in a single goal configuration. For this goal, I'm going to select begins with for my goal match type. You don't need to include your domain, so just the page. And then the next step is to enter a conversion value. This is optional, but I always recommend adding a value for your goal if you can. You can use a real value, a calculated value, or a symbolic value. Okay, so an example of a calculated value would be uh, most commonly used around a website generating leads. For example, if you had a consulting business and you had a contact form where you're trying to get people to connect with you for consulting projects. Now, not every single one of those people completing the form is going to end up being a client or a customer. But what we can do is we can do a rough calculation to understand the average value of each lead. And then we also have the option of using a symbolic value. This is really where we're using a guesstimate to rank the importance of the different conversion actions we're tracking inside Google Analytics. So once we've entered the dollar value for our goal conversion, we can then enter our funnel steps that lead to the thank you or the conversion page. I'm going to name the step and define the URL of my page for the step. I recommend leaving required to no, as this only alters the older funnel visualization report inside Google Analytics. In the majority of cases, you really don't need to turn this option on. Now we can define up to 20 funnel steps for our goal by selecting add another step. Google Analytics also gives us the option to preview the goal conversion rate based on your configuration before you actually save the goal. This is important because goal data will only show up from the point you set it up moving forward. So there's no sort of going back, there's no historical data for our goal conversions. So what we can do is we can click on verify this goal to make sure the goal conversion rate is what you'd expect. And then when you're happy, you can click on save. We've now configured a goal inside Google Analytics. As you start out, it's important to think about all the different actions that you want people to perform on your website. It's really worth taking the time to configure all of these as goals inside Google Analytics. You'll find that some of these actions can be classified as macro and micro conversions. The best way to think about a macro conversion is that they're your primary objectives. So what is actually going to drive the most value for you and your organization? Examples of macro conversions include things like generating leads, making purchases, becoming a member and booking. Now you absolutely need to ensure that you're using Google Analytics to measure these top level objectives. Uh, these macro conversions should really be your first priority when it comes to configuring goals. And then we can complement these with micro conversions, which are really secondary objectives. These are actions that show engagement, but that don't provide the same value as your macro conversions. Micro conversions tell you that people have gone beyond viewing just content on your website. They have a deeper connection with your organization. Examples of micro conversions include someone downloading a PDF off your website or watching a video that's embedded on your website, commenting, or maybe logging into your members area. You should take the time to configure these micro conversions as well as your macro conversions in Google Analytics. 
So that's how you can track conversions using Google Analytics. Remember, it's important to assign a value to each goal you configure so you can see the value you're creating from your website and from your marketing campaigns. If you want to learn more about Google Analytics, then join me in my Google Analytics course where you'll learn practical skills for using your reports and techniques for configuring Google Analytics. You can find a link to join the course in the description below this video. Are you tracking conversions? Do you have any tips you'd like to add? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, then please like it so I know to make more videos like this. See you next time.